Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about constructors and destructors in the context of inheritance in C++. We'll talk about the order of execution. We'll talk about how derived classes can invoke the base classes constructors. And then we'll talk about how you can inherit constructors from a base class in your derived classes. So let's get started. So let's write a class, which I will call base. So class base and class base We'll just have a couple of private variables uh, we'll call them a and b so int a and b and then as part of our public interface we're going to have a couple constructors we'll have a default constructor and that will assign to a uh, zero and to b zero and then we'll have an overloading constructor which will have two parameters and we'll simply assign to our private stuff the arguments passed to the constructor. So we'll do something like A equals X and we'll do B equals Y. And then let's go ahead and just have a little function here that will print out the contents of the private variables. So we'll just call it print and we'll just do a little cout statement. So cout A and then comma B. Just so we can see for testing purposes, the contents of those variables. Now we'll have a derived class which we'll call derived. And this will have its own constructor, part of its public interface, just derived. And in our base class, let's add a destructor too. And we'll have a destructor in our derived class as well. So what we wanna do is we wanna see the order in which these things execute. So in our default constructor up inside of base here, we'll just put a temporary little cout statement saying, you know, um, base constructor, and then we'll have a cout statement. It's destructor that just says base destructor. And then we'll do the same thing or a similar thing for the drive class. So cout derived constructor and for the destructor, see how derived destructor and let's not forget our class access specifier and the class that we're inheriting from which is going to be base okay so here's what you have to remember the base class's constructor executes first then the derived class's constructor and then for the destructor it's just in the opposite order so, so let's see an example of that i'll go ahead and create a derived class by using dynamic memory allocation, the new derived, and then that way I'll be able to delete the object. So this right here is gonna trigger the constructors to execute, and then this is gonna trigger the destructors to execute. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the base constructor followed by the derived constructor, and then for the delete statement, we're gonna see the derived destructor followed by the base destructor. So let's see that. Okay, so you can see base constructor, derived constructor, derived destructor, base destructor. So that's the order in which those execute. So now let's take a look at how we can have the derived class invoke the base constructor. So what we can do is we can create a constructor in the derived class and we can pass it a couple of arguments. So let's say int q and int r. And what we want to do is we want to pass the contents of Q and R up to the base classes constructor. So we want to copy the contents of Q into X and the contents of R into Y here, and which will thereby assign the contents of Q to A through the body of the constructor function, and then copy the contents of R into B through the body of the base constructor. We're going to have our header just like before, and then we're going to have a colon followed by the name of the constructor of our base class. And then we're gonna pass it arguments. So this is gonna be like a function call. If you just looked at it by itself, it'd be a function call, and then you could pass some things to it, like say five and three. But in this case, we wanna pass the contents of Q and R. Okay, so that's gonna do it and then of course since the derived classes constructor is a function well you know you have to have the function body there so let me get rid of this stuff here just to get it out of the way so now when i go and i instantiate an instance of derived i can pass it some values so that eight is going to get copied into q here this three is going to get copied into r here and then that eight is going to be passed up to the base class constructor it's going to be assigned to x and so then that eight 
is then going to be assigned A through the assignment statement here. And similarly with the R, right? So the three is going to be copied into R. And then that three is going to be passed up to the base class constructor assigned to Y. And then the three in the Y is going to be assigned to B. So we'll check that out. We'll just call our print function here so we can see that working. Okay, so that's how you invoke the base classes constructor. Okay, and so you can write this any way that you need to. I mean, we could even add our own private integer variable here. So let's call it S. And then we can put inside the body of this derived class constructor, we can say something like S equals what? Well, let's add another parameter here. And we will do in X. Then we'll assign to S the contents of X. So that way we now have the ability to pass three values. They will do five here. Five will get assigned to the X. And then that five and X will be assigned to the S here. So let's just add a little accessor up here so we can prove it. So we'll do int get S and we'll simply return S. And then down here, We'll invoke that method. So we'll do C out D dot get S. So let's go ahead and test that. And so you can see that it worked. There's all kinds of combinations of how you can write this possibilities, it's just all going to depend upon, you know, what you need for your project. Another way that people will write their, their constructor like this is they'll move this onto a separate line and then they'll have, you know, the body of their function on a separate line still. I mean, whatever you prefer, whatever is easier for you to read, you know, for super small functions like this, I would put everything on one line, but you know, sometimes people will write it this way as well, but it, really it's up to you. All right, so finally, let's go ahead and talk about how you can inherit a class's constructors. So it could be the case that your derived class doesn't need any additional constructors. It doesn't need to do anything extra special. So rather than write our code like this, what we can do is, is we can get rid of our constructor here and derived, since if all we wanna do is be able to initialize A and B from the derived class, then we'll just inherit the constructors from the base class. And the way that we do that is we simply write base colon colon base, and then we can put a semicolon there and that's all you need to do. So now the constructors are going to be inherited. So you can see now there's no squiggles here because I've inherited this constructor. And so now when I pass it the eight and the three, it's this constructor here that's going to execute. There's no need for an intermediary constructor in um, derived. So let's get rid of this accessor since we don't have an S anymore and the call to it. And now when we run this, you're going to see when we compile and build this, that it runs just fine. Okay, so there you go. So now you know how to deal with constructors in the context of inheritance in C++. You know the order in which the constructors and destructors are going to execute. You know how to invoke a base class's constructor and pass arguments to it from the derived class. And finally, you know how to inherit constructors from your base class into your derived class. Thanks for watching.